Torn. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy Ace Torn. Yup, you know what time it is. I'm the voice of the South Q Smitty. Hey, man, it's Polish like Jocks. We giving you that cool rush over here. We got a very special guest in the building tonight. Yep, yep, we got a special guest in the building, man. We got a major journalist in the building. That's right. I'm talking about she's a journalist for the official Black Magazine, you know, the Young Entrepreneur Pioneers. 2K 2022 Boss Awards winner. Yeah. Let's put that in there. A-list. <laughs> man, she, she's heavy in the street. Yeah, she's heavy in the street. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you, Nishay J. I like that you added A-list on that. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, you got to, because that's what it is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hi, Mr. Boys, Torn, what happened for the job yeah. squad, man? You need to pull up at the Dr. Bars. No cover charge. And guess what? You got to be 21 to enter. You got to. The world games is here. So you trying to pregame. I'm at Dr. Bar where you need to come to. You trying to wind down. This is the spot you need to come to. Or trying to move around a certain way. You don't want too many people in your business. The Birmingham Dacker Bar where you need to come to, man. 324 9th Street North. And also, don't forget, Sunday through Thursday, 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. It's Polar Jocks. Now back to the show. Oh, you glowing, too. What you doing? What you doing to glow? Tell me. Living, tell me the secret. Staying in motion, what I told you. Staying mm -hmm. in motion and praying. Yeah. That's the key. Let me tell y'all something what she did before the <laughs> before the interview, y'all. I ain't gonna lie. This is kind of our first time, first guest ever doing this. She actually prayed before the interview. And that just that just set the whole mold, you know what I'm saying? That set the tempo to a whole nother level. So I just wanna get her a hand for that, you know, for bringing something different. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Because a lot of times people be ashamed to pray mm. in front of other people. Mm. So let me ask you about you know. that. Like, uh, what's your spiritual journey like? Like, where did that come from? I love this. Um, so I just rededicated my life to Christ about a month ago. It's been, okay. a, month. It's been a month. Um, it's been an amazing journey. Like, I grew up in a Christian church, grew up going to church seven days a week. I did that. Mm -hmm. And, of course, like us all, we stray away, and we start spilling ourselves, thinking we know everything. Right. And then I quit my job in May, and God was telling me, like, okay, you really need me for real now. So oh, yeah. I decided to just rededicate my life and show God that I can trust him. Mm -hmm. So it's been, it's man, it's been amazing just. I'm getting sense. I'm getting sensitive just thinking about it. Just staying in the spirit, man. Everybody wants to talk about God, but nobody wants to talk about Jesus. Right. And mm. it's just I'm learning so much things that I knew, but as we get older and we get more mature, mm -hmm. we see it through a different spectrum, and mm -hmm. it's different. It's more sensitive. It's more significant. So it's just. It's been amazing praying every day, all day, staying yeah. in the spirit. So <laughs> I guess you beautiful. you meditate as well a lot. I used to meditate a lot. Mm. I would actually endorse meditation, but now I just pray. Okay. Instead of just being like still, I just talk, pray. Mm. Like he my therapist. That's good. That's what's up. Now, I want to talk about real quick about you quitting your job. What made you quit your job? Did he get a give you a message to go ahead and do that? Or you just felt it in your spirit to just, you know, quit? It's time to, it's time to jump yeah. out on faith. He definitely gave me a message. Mm -hmm. I He told me to quit my job in last December, and then I was disobedient, then things started to happen. I mm -hmm. started to get real uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then one day I got the urge, and I talked to my support system, really dope support system, y'all. That's important, having the right people around you right. that pray with you. And, and they gave me to go ahead. My family gave me to go ahead and... I did it. I cried the whole way there because I was scared. Yeah. It was a scary, you know, losing that comf that comfortability. Yeah. Losing that, that, security. that safety net. Yeah, yeah, losing that safety net. You know, not knowing what's going to happen. Mm, that's a big risk. That's yeah. a big risk. <laughs> it, it, is, like... it is. And when I have this conversation with people about me quitting my job, I don't want them to get inspired to quit their job. Mm -hmm. I want them to talk to God first because <clears throat> that's what I did. That's what I did. I talked to God first. I didn't have a safety plan. I didn't have a uh, uh, exit strategy, you know, I just, God was like, if you really trust me, you talk about faith, you talk about this, yeah. but if you really trust me, show me, show me, I'm, oof, show me, and, yeah. and I cried, I cried, I, I cried because I needed that strength, mm -hmm. you know, I needed that, that, that empowerment for him, the whole way to work, I'm just crying, I'm talking yeah. about the day crying. you was quitting, yeah, the, the yeah. last day, of, no, the day I was mm -hmm. turning in my two weeks notice, gotcha, and then when I gave it to her, it was like, whoosh, mm -hmm. Wow. It's over with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's over with. It's done. And so what happened after you quit your job? Um, man, y'all got some y'all got some good questions. <laughs> so 
of course I'm with Y E and I'm doing my thing with them, but mm. you know, I didn't I didn't have a, a extra side hustle. So I really didn't know what was gonna happen. I just trusted God and I lie to you not. Two weeks after quitting my job, I got the job with the official black magazine. Yeah, I seen amazing, that. That's amazing. That's big. Amazing. And not only did I get that job as a journalist, mm -hmm. a week later he called me and asked and promoted me up to a media and PR coordinator that was getting paid way more money than a journalist. Mm -hmm. And he didn't know me. He just knew like the type of energy that I had when we was on the phone. Right. But he didn't know if I knew what I was doing or anything and in three weeks after quitting my job, here I am was a signed journalist working yeah, for a magazine yeah. company. Like it was just, mm. it was destined. Like it was. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I get chills, y'all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't mean to take y'all to church, but no, nah, let's real. go. It's real. It's yeah. real. It's real. It's real. It's real. So during the process of a journalism, explain what is a journalist to ones out there that's confused. You know, because you got a reporter, you got a journalist, and you have um, photo journalist. Yeah, photo journalist. Mm. Yeah, it's different categories. One girl actually called me a reporter. I feel like mm -hmm. she was throwing shade, but it's cool. Oh, she, We're oh, all okay. in the same family, though. Mm -hmm. But I am an entertainment journalist, meaning I cover, like, entertainment, like, um, movies, you know, new music, mm -hmm. um, black-owned businesses, just things that kind of, like, mm -hmm. it's uplifting. Like, right. you got, like, the journalists who cover, like, news, who cover, like, um, emergencies, like, um... You know weather and things like that but i'm more mm. entertainment more media i like the uplifting things gotcha the the inspiring things what was like a uh story that you covered that really touched you bj babj 23 birmingham kickoff party is going down saturday night august 6th from 10 p.m to 2 a.m in las vegas hosted by roy wood jr what is going on in a bj fam it's your boy roy wood jr representing my hometown of birmingham and eunice elliott What's up, NABJ? It's your girl, Eunice Elliott. With a guy versus girl DJ battle with Chris Coleman and DJ Chocolate. What came to mind was Brittany Jefferson. Have y'all heard of Brittany Jefferson? She's from here. Brittany Jefferson. She's oh. an actress now. Actress. Nah, and like me on it. She starred in uh, Rap Shit Now. Rap shit now. The new, the new series, Rap Shit, that's on HBO. Yeah, I've, I've heard of that series, but yeah. I've never. You watched the series? No, before? I never seen it before. Yeah, I've heard of it. It's mm -hmm. new. Mm -hmm. It's on Netflix, but I've never watched it. For real? Yeah. Okay. But she's in that. Yeah, yeah. Dang. She's from Alabama. She went to mm -hmm. Fairfield, so she from. Oh, here, she from really here. from here? Yeah, she yeah, from yeah. here. From that's here. crazy. So, um, I interviewed her about three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and she called me from a two hundred five number. And I didn't mm -hmm. answer because I'm like, who calling me from a 205 oh, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't answer. And she ended up calling me back. And that made me feel closer to her, that she had a 205 now. Mm -hmm. That made me feel closer to her because here she is from, from, from Fairfield, Alabama. And she in L.A. in Atlanta. Yeah. And she in Hollywood doing her thing. Traveling. That inspired mm -hmm. me so deep. And mm -hmm. her story just matched my story, how I'm, I'm itching to get out of Alabama. Yeah. I love Alabama. But there's more out there. Oh, yeah, definitely. I'm you know. itching to get out. Maybe yeah. I shouldn't be itching, but I'm yeah. itching to get out of Alabama. Yeah, yeah you, you probably definitely <laughs> it's itching. Going, it's going. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But her story definitely inspired me because I saw myself in her. And mm -hmm. she just was telling me, Nache, keep going. What you're doing, you know, it's, it's amazing. You're using your talent for good. You're great at it. Mm -hmm. So that really touched me. I don't have a story where, like, someone, like, overcame cancer or something like that. That's always a touching story. Yeah. But for me, it's more inspirational for me. And Brittany Jefferson, she, she touched my spirit. Like, mm -hmm. I was standing there on the phone crying with her. And at one point, we stopped the interview, and I just cut the record off, and we just started talking regularly, mm -hmm. like, about life and, you know, how hard it is, because it's not easy, but if you no, keep it's going, not. if you keep going, it's, oof, the reward in the end is, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what's up. I like that. Wow, I like, like your story. We got Nashay J in the building, y'all. Yeah. We got yeah, in the building right now, inspirational right now. Um, Nashay, I mean, so what got you into journalism? Let's take it back a little bit more so we can get the origin of, like, how you even gained an interest for journalism. Yeah. yeah, my, this is so good. My story to me is so beautiful. And not everybody can say that about their story, but you got to look at the, the, the beauty in it. You have to. But how I got started, y'all, I got really good with talking to myself real good. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about being nicer to myself, being more kinder, 
being more patient with myself. I just got really good at that. I was going through a breakup and I had to figure out what I wanted to do. I had to figure out what's for me. And in the midst of that, I had to learn that I'm, I had to tell myself I'm really hard on myself. Mm -hmm. In 2017, I had to sit down and be like, Nisha, you're hard on yourself. You know, so I just got real good with empowering myself. And then once I mastered it, it just yeah. started seeping out of me. Right. Like, it was like God was saying, like, I gave it to you. Now you got to give it out. Right. It got to the point where it's so much, I ain't got no choice but to give it out. You got to. Because <laughs> you, know you get to the point, you start talking to yourself a yeah, lot. Yeah, and I do, I do that. that. Yeah. <laughs> I do that a lot. And that's why, I, and, and I long story short, I ain't going to make it long, but that's why a lot of videos I make, I be, them messages be, I be talking to myself. And I be like, I gotta, I gotta say something about this shit. Yeah. I gotta tell some more people. You know what I'm saying? They say geniuses like talk to themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm starting mm -hmm. to believe that, bro, because yeah, right. I do that a lot. Like, I'm like, man, I know I ain't got my damn crazy. Mama, my mom like to say I'm crazy. You know like, it, it's, it's on a different frequency, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you on the right path. You, you live you with yourself every day. So. You do. You, yeah, know. you ain't gonna talk to nobody else. We Who the hell else you gonna talk to? Yeah, and then you have the most authentic <laughs> conversation yeah. with yourself. If you're not gonna be real with nobody, you're gonna be real with yourself. You're gonna ask your own questions. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, you do. <laughs> so with the Boss Awards winner, how did like how did that come about? Um Cause is that with a company or was that Boss Bay University? Boss Bay so, University. Muff okay. Deezy the Don. Shout out to Muff Deezy the Don, because mm -hmm. the Don she is. Um, she put it together. She one of the bosses in the city. Okay. Um, well respected, well known. She put it together, and somebody sent me the screenshot of my name being on there. Super dope. Mm. And not, I'm not being cocky, y'all. Mm. I just know who Man, I am. Go ahead. I, 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 I was expecting to win because I've been yeah. working hard. Yeah. I've been working hard, and people have seen where I come from. Like I remember mm. when nobody was messing with me. I right. was getting no likes, no views. Mm. And now people are starting to see, like, okay, she really doing this. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I was expecting to win. It was more so, like, that strong faith, like, I know I'm going to win. Yeah. Facts. And also, too, <laughs> shit, JSU alumni, yeah. man. So, yeah. shout out yeah. JSU in the building. Yeah. Gang yeah. in the building. Yeah. 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 yeah, Man, that was how long ago? Man. Ooh, Ten years. Yeah, about Wait, 10. Now. I know about eight. Yeah, about eight or, eight or nine years. Yeah, going on, I think seven for me. I can't believe, like, I feel like a full-blown alumni. Real talk, You know like, what I'm bro, saying? Like, real I'll, alumni. Like, that's, that's crazy. That's just, like, so weird. He said you, you went to JSU. Yeah, I went to JSU, too. I yeah, face, we graduated though. together. Yeah. yeah. I remember his face, but I don't remember. Maybe. I don't know. I would have remembered the voice. You was in I was ducked <laughs> off in the uh, self hall. Mm. Yeah. You was in communication. Oh, yeah. That was a communication building, right? I journalism. Um, no, yeah. I didn't even. I didn't even. I didn't do journalism in college. Oh, you did. So what, you, what was oh, your major okay. college? Um, it was drama. Oh, drama. okay. So you were at Stone Center. I can't remember none of. The, I can't yeah. remember y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> none of the That's classes. I honestly there. went to JSU. Went to college because mm. my church. You know, back then it was like either you're going to work or you're going to go to college. Mm -hmm. So I went to college for everybody else but myself. Gotcha. And I went down there and played, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. I'm just going to be real. Don't feel bad. I did I too. I don't feel bad. For about two, three years, and I realized. <laughs> you got to play for like for that yeah. $30,000. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> when I realized I had to get out of there, and I seen freshmen and sophomores start to catch up, like start being a junior too. Mm -hmm. We just seen we the same damn uh, classification. I was like, yeah, I got to get out of here. Mm -hmm. I got to get the hell out of here, you know. College, college one, it it wasn't for me. I oh. after getting out of JSU, I went to Jeff State, and I remember y'all walking down the hall, looking in classroom, and students was like, Just teachers was born. like, and eh, 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 on the board, like this is A plus B, and I was like, yo, it's zombies up in here. Yeah, and that was the day I decided that college was not for me. So how long you stayed at Jeff State? Um, for a year. For a year. For a year. Just. It just went for me. Like, mm -hmm. I've never been good at math. Yeah. I passed with a C or a D um, in history. You know, it just, it just went for it me. It just went for you. I, I, ain't wrong with I that, learned though. a lot on my own, honestly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Honestly. You think, uh, like, college is a scam? No, not for the people who really, really, really want to do it mm -hmm. and be there. Mm. <laughs> Because, I mean, when it comes to uh, college, you know, nowadays, especially with the um, student loans being reduced and cut down yeah, and stuff like yeah. that, like, it's like if they're doing that now, people feel like, well, I mean, y'all could have been did this, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Parents, it's like, like so y'all really mm -hmm. wasted our money, you know, and then, like, people feel like if they've already repaid some of the student loans, it's like they just literally just threw money away just for yeah. it to get cut down. 
You know what I'm saying? He cut down ten thousand now. That's and a lot of money. It's ten to twenty. Ten to twenty. Ten to twenty. If you got okay. Pell Grant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know how I got into college. Like I didn't know mm-hmm. that my mom had to go through this process. All I know is mm-hmm. I said a school and mm-hmm. I was off to school. So she actually filled out applications for you. She did everything, and Damn, I didn't figure so out. You really like, yeah, until I got out of. It out was there. yeah. So it was really you doing it for her, for real, for real. For mm-hmm. everybody around me. When yeah. you started doing like what you wanted to do, like how did she receive that? At first, at first, just like everything, you know, it's a little, it's a little skeptical, mm-hmm. but once her and just everybody around me started to see that I was serious about what I was doing, it got real, real. Like, yeah. when I quit my job, the last day, I went to my grandma's house. My grandma, she's a big mama. She's traditional. Yeah, you know what the I'm real saying? big mama. Yeah, yeah, facts, facts. And I went over there, like, last day, fresh off work, went over there, and I was like, I quit my job. And she was like, oh, you finally did it. I promise you. Oh, for real? You. Wow. Yes, so I she knew before you, you that she, you yes. needed to do that. It was like, like just that belief. Like I said, that support system, like that yeah. that helped me more than we she go Big Mama got them dreams, they though. Yeah, they be having them dreams. They know it. It's yeah. crazy because they know what's going to happen before it even happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's a good sign. That's a good sign. <laughs> that's good, though. Like, So are you, so as of right now, you still work with um, Young Entrepreneur Pioneers? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. You the number one journalist, right? Facts. Mm-hmm. How'd you get with uh, Young Entrepreneurs? Mm, I interviewed Justin about two years ago, and then maybe like a year later, he brought me onto the team. Okay. Destiny, y'all. It's crazy how, it's not crazy, but it's alignment, how everything's just line up. Like, if I had not, you know, met Justin, interviewed Justin, he probably wouldn't have known me. Mm-hmm. And it's amazing because before I interviewed Justin, I entered this realtor named Megan, Megan Battle. Super dope girl. And I was telling her what my dreams and my goals were after the interview. Mm-hmm. How I wanted to open up a studio where different like people can come in. Like YouTubers can come in. Chefs can come in and just record. Yeah. Do what they need. And she was like, um, I have a friend named Justin who kind of has something like that. And then like yeah, a do. year later... I met Justin, yeah. not knowing that that's who she was talking about. It's amazing. Man, it's crazy how the tables turn, mm-hmm. and you manifest things, and it actually happens. Like glory to God, yeah. You think on it long enough, it'll happen. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and uh, you also are a part of Official Black Magazine. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Official Black Magazine pretty much focuses on the Black community, right? Yes. Would you say? Um, do you feel like? based upon your coverage experience, what needs to be addressed in the black community the most? Mm, That's interesting. Um, If I'm going to take it there, I'm going to say Christ. (laughs) Honestly, I could say mental health, but, Mm -hmm. you know, that's not... Yeah, that's got to play it out. Yeah, (laughs) that's no issue for for Christ. Mm. I say say Christ, man. Um... Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't be wanting to sound like a crazed Christ. No, no, I get what you're saying. I feel yeah. like you know we kind of drifted away from spirituality over the last ten they started years. Started talking about what mental, mental health. health we, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was like more mental, like Things mental health, and stuff. Not really understanding the importance of actually reading the Bible yeah. instead right, of right. hearing what people yeah. say about right. the Bible. Man, you know what I'm saying? I, I just feel like everybody, mm-hmm. everybody talking about God, God, mm. this, God, this. But it's like, do you have a Bible? Yeah. Do you read the scripture? Not just the scriptures that we know, but I'm talking about the stories in the Bible. Mm. Balaam, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's people, we know about Jacob, Joseph. We know about all of them, yeah. but it's so many people in the Bible that, and stories that's so related, relatable to today. It is. So I would say just getting back into the Word, man. Like, that's important. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to make me go and read my Bible tonight. I'm going to read you. Because <laughs> it's like, the more I start understanding it, it's like, man, it's kind of interesting. You know, it's for real, for real. Like, yeah, it is you start learning about them stories, you're like, that really happened? Yeah. And I was thinking about, I'm like, what if that really happened? Like, okay, say, for example, you know, if something happened back then, they would stone them to death. Mm-hmm. Like, God will allow them to stone them to death. What if that happened in this day? Yeah. Like, that'll be, would you think life would be better? Mm. The consequences that people make, you think, will you, will you think, do you think they still will make them? I if they know, if they ooh. knew they would get stoned to death. If I they still see. rob, kill. If they still rob, kill. Yeah. And they have like, and the consequences now, you got to stand out in the middle of the road or you got to go somewhere, a certain place, and you get stoned to death for that. 
that's that that's just wrong all around. It's just you know what wrong. I'm saying? Mm. And stoning is still happening today. It's just yeah. the worst. It happens in different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's still bad. It's just happening in different ways. It changed the stone with gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying like, do you think people actually getting like we're gonna man, this is a whole this is a two day story about I ain't gonna lie, this Bible yeah. study. <laughs> I don't wanna get too too deep in it, but I'm just saying like, do you think the like the, the people who's robbing, okay, for example, robbing, killing and steal, if they knew the consequences that they would get stoned to death. Like hit, really hit with stones, not shot, not killed, but really hit this st with stones until they die. Like, I think they'll still do it because I think they still, still do it. Yeah, because I think I've, I've actually seen that actually still happen in certain countries. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I saw a video where a dude, you know, that's an underage girl, and mm -hmm. they ended up like stoning her. Death. I think this was like in Haiti. I saw a video Damn, like okay. years ago. Yeah, that's what they I'm still do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, but I feel like man, people would just be messed up in the head. They're going to do it anyway. What the consequences yeah. are, you know, yeah. sadly. You might, you might be right. Just, people know that they're going to go to jail. They know that they're going to get shot, but they still do certain things. Still so you're going to have right. certain people who think that they invisible to that type and of thing. And then they, you know, think about prison, you know, they get tortured in prison for that type oh, yeah. of hey, bad yeah. stuff, you know. Certain stuff you do, yeah. They still decide to go. <laughs> yeah. You got a new that, one every day. That's just... That's that's wild. That, though, yeah, yeah, think about that though. <laughs> like you're you know watching somebody <laughs> die, yeah. like that's scary. And, like, and stuff like that, that is, is, I ain't gonna care. stuff like that is mm. it, it passes in certain countries. In yeah. certain, it's it's crazy. Like I saw a lady get her head chopped off with a no. machete. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if it's by her husband, but it was by. It was on man. social media. It was on Facebook. Yeah. I think I seen what you saying. It was yeah, in like Mexico, Mexico or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, and I know. Probably okay. seen the same one. Oh my god! Yeah. So y'all, yeah. y'all want to talk about USA? Y'all better kiss the ground. I'm talking about for real. Kiss the US soil. Them folks chopping heads yeah. off like they chopping heads off. Like they like throwing there. people off buildings in ISIS. They mm -hmm. throwing gay people off buildings in ISIS in front of crowds like. It's wild, man. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, we in, eight, we in the USA, so we don't really hear them stories like that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But when you really hear that, you're like, damn, you know, America might not be so damn bad. <laughs> yeah, America really <laughs> ain't <laughs> so bad, so for real, for real. Yeah. Yeah, I got it. For real. You saw how they gave that woman nine years for some weed pen. Yeah, yeah, bro, yeah, like it's in nine Russia. Nine years, like. Think about that. And then there's a Russian prison at that, you know what I'm saying? It's not one like of the worst way. prisons, bro, like. <sighs> So Man, I heard, you know. You better off just like. Yeah. I heard don't mess with Russia. That's what I heard. Yeah. I don't know nothing else about Russia. I heard you don't mess with them. Uh -huh, yeah. Nine years for a pen. Hell no, I don't mess with nah, them. They, they, they on some more shit. <laughs> they were over there doing they all kinds of crazy shit. stuff, man. I was hurt by that news, so I ain't going to Yeah, care. that was messed up. <laughs> that, that was real messed up, man. But um, So what's next? What's next, Nj? Oh. Um, honestly, I'm going to take it down. Mm-hmm. I try to do things on my own, y'all, and it don't work. So I'm just going with God's flow. I got you. Whatever he put in my face and he says for me, I'm going to go with it. So let me ask this. Uh, yellow journalism. Do you feel like today's journalism is really, like, big on that? Like, as far as making something out of nothing, like, making something sound like it's more than what it is, you know what I'm saying? Like, reporting, like, fake news, reporting, reporting gossip and stuff like that. What are your thoughts on how news is being reported in today's society? I feel like people take on stories that kind of reflect their personality. Mm -hmm. They kind of reflect like how their mind works. So if you got people who doing fake news, they got some they got some going on yeah. on the inside that they need to work on. So I'm pretty I'm pretty, you know, to each his own on that. <laughs> to each his own. Yeah. What can you tell a young journalist that's trying to get in the game? They, you know, they kind of trying to find their way, but they need guidance. What would you tell them? Keep going. That sounds cliche, but keep going. You gonna find your path. You may not know what it is right now, but keep going. Just keep going, and mm -hmm. you don't have to have all the tools in your box to build it, to build whatever you're trying to build. Just start with what you have. Keep going, and tools gonna start popping up out of nowhere yeah. <laughs> to add. So yeah, just keep going, and make sure it's what you wanna do for sure, for sure. Okay, that's the only way. And last but not least, what if you had to cover any type of story in the world, any person in the world? It can be a person, it can be a story, it can be an event. What would that be? Let's say event first, and what then we'll go to the person next. 
like a event for like BET, Red Carpet, VH, VH1, MTV, you know, some in that nature. It ain't gotta be those events, but you know. Hmm. Gotta thank you. You staring a hole at me. Hold on, you making me. You making me. You making me nervous. Hold on. Oh, don't get nervous now. I started to put the pressure on you. Yeah, yeah don't get nervous now. I was just too putting the pressure. So I I did the BET Awards um last oh. year. Mm-hmm. So um. You really gonna have to jump hard now. Yeah, that, that's yeah, big. Yeah, that was that was that was pretty cool. Um. That's what's up. Just to see like these real people like. Ain't nothing different. Than yeah, people. yeah. With like, more money. Mulatto, she had a whole attitude. Mm-hmm. Rehearsal day, she had an attitude, and mm-hmm. it was good. It was refreshing mm-hmm. to see that yeah. she had an attitude. Right. And the next day, she was on her P's and Q's. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say like just events like that because we kind of like idolize people. Oh yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. So if people saw more of these people that we look up to, mm-hmm. <laughs> excuse me, that would that would. That would help so they can know, <clears throat> excuse me, that y'all just trying to, we all just trying to pay our rent. Yeah. <laughs> we, we all just trying to, to eat. It's all the same. Yeah. So that would be something, just that realness mm-hmm. to cover. Because I don't, I don't consider myself a celebrity. I don't even like when other people call me a celebrity because mm. I feel like that word to me makes me feel unreachable, like untouchable. Mm. Because people hit me up like, I know you busy, and I be laying in the bed. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but like, they think that. That's the yeah, assumption yeah, people Yeah, get, yeah, you know? I know you You this and that. So I would just say bringing that, that realness to, like, going to a certain level of success in your life and still just being reachable, being attainable to people who striving. All right. Who, mm. People who don't know how to, how to, how to take the first step. Gotcha. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's, you just said some big stuff right there, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like real. saying uh, celebrities, you feel like we should remove that whole word out their vocabulary? Man, because now everybody a celebrity. When everybody. People, I've heard. You I've, reach 10K, you a celebrity. Yeah, mm. man. I have, I have 960 <laughs> followers on IG. Mm. I don't even want to get to 1,000 followers, y'all. Because I feel like it's just going to throw me in a pool mm-hmm. with everybody else who just think they somebody because they have a thousand something followers. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. I've been in events where I've heard people, somebody walk up to them, they be like, the real celebrity is here. That, mm-hmm. that word is used, it's washed up. Yeah. And mm-hmm. if we take, if we continue to take it far, mm-hmm. the world going to be screwed even more because mm-hmm. people think, you know, it's okay to think highly of yourself. It's okay to walk around with a chip on your shoulder, but... Mm-hmm. To to think that you're better than, you know, somebody else just because you're out of, you know, the storm that they are now going through. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's wild. I just think that word just. You said something. You said you would rather, this, you, know, you would rather stay at 960 followers mm-hmm. than go to a thousand. Yeah. You rarely hear that. I don't know Why if that's a that? good thing or a bad thing. Because, like followers nowadays is like it's the thing like you know people only will want we only want to work with you if you have a certain amount of followers mm-hmm. you know people only pay attention to you if you have a certain amount of followers and i'm just like i don't care about that like oh, i don't care like i make a post on facebook and i get off i won't even go look at the followers or the comments yeah. it'll be three days later before i check it out it's just it's just it's it's irrelevant to me. I so mean, how I you, get it. But how you train your your mind like that? Like how you train yourself to not go back and look at it? Cause it's really addictive. It's like a drug. I did it at first. I did it when yeah. nobody was paying attention to me. Mm-hmm. But now that I'm working really hard and people paying attention to me, I don't do it. Mm. Basically, you grind. You mean you don't care when you really really grind it. Whether you like it or not, it's yeah. happening. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at you. That's what's up. <laughs> We got in the shade in the building, y'all, man. Anything you want to tell the people before we get ready to get out of here? Mm, I love y'all. Stay motivated. Stay inspired. Keep Christ first. Let him lead you. Let him guide you. Um, yeah, man. Glory to God. We got to talk about God more, y'all. Yeah. We got to talk about Jesus more. And that's what I encourage. More Bible study with your friends. Mm. More worship with your friends. Like I have my homie. Do y'all know Devontae Ravizy? 
Devontae. Damn, that name sound for me. Oh, I probably know sure. if I said, where you from? It's Rabbit Connection from the East Side. The homie, man. He pulled so many people from the East Side. Yeah, yeah. 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 The East Side is his own city. <laughs> yeah, yeah, facts, facts. Now we ain't going to get into that whole mm. West Side, East Side thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the homie, man, he pulled up on me, and we had Bible study, bro. He was like, I got a word for you. He said, I can't even say it over the phone. I got to mm. pull up on you. I got mm-hmm. my Bible in the car. Yeah. I said, I got mine right here. He Damn. pulled up on me. We in the front room having a whole Bible study. So yeah. just just get you get you some peeps, some good people around you who going to keep you in that word. Because mm-hmm. God is he's powerful, and he want to do more than we even know that he can do. Like, there's some things that he want to do for us that we haven't even thought of yet. Yeah. That's the That's the most fascinating part about it, and I'm Deep. learning that. So. Just stay in the word, stay in the gospel. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you love God, do what He say. Yeah, <laughs> do what He say. Cause just like a parent, He gonna punish you. Mm-hmm. He gonna get that whooping. You know. Mm-hmm. I want to say this before we get out. How I'm learning, you know, to just getting deeper and deeper. I'm looking at God as our Father. Mm-hmm. When we mess up, our parents kick us out the house. When we do the things that God asks us not to do, I'm a sinner. Sin feels good, you know. I repented for my sins. But when we do things that our parents tell us not to do, they say, not in my house. Yeah. You can get out. You can go somewhere, but you're not going to do it in my house. That's kind of how God is. He, you get kicked out of the kingdom until you come back and be like, okay, God, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to obey your rules. And God is like, welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> now you can inherit everything that I have for you, just like a parent. Mm-hmm. But you're going to get that whooping. You're going to get that TV took away. You know what I'm saying? You're going oh, yeah. to get that discipline. It's I just, understand that room. Yeah. You're going yeah. you to eat the bologna Lord, sandwich. You're going to get that whooping. So God is just like a parent. Mm-hmm. And I, I, that makes it easier for me to, to understand him. Mm. That's powerful, man. I like that. And, hey, we're going to end on that right <laughs> there. I ain't nothing else to say after that. I ain't going to lie. Make sure y'all follow. I know she don't like nobody. No, she don't like no followers. I ain't going to tell them what to follow you. Now, at. we ain't going to say that because it might get to the point where nobody follow me. Yeah, like, all right. Go ahead. Go ahead and tell them. Um, so, you can follow me on IG at the Nishé J. You can follow me on Facebook at Nishé Jackson. I'm also on LinkedIn as Nishé Jackson. Um, Twitter, the Nishé J. There you go, man. Lock in. <laughs> Gee, man, it's powerful. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Make sure you follow Polar Jocks. You know where to follow. I find us at P O L A R J O Q S. Yep, and we'll see y'all next episode. And uh, we go. Shout out. <laughs>